Hi, uh, I'm Kyle Maxwell. I'm a senior in the computer science department. Um, I've been working with Professor Sarah Friskin, who's also in the computer science department, as well as Professor Carolyn Keo, um, who is in the mechanical engineering as well as department, as well as being head of the Human Factors Research Laboratory. So we're trying to model um, surgery because we're modeling laparoscopic surgery, which is a relatively new type of technique, and it is a non-invasive type of surgery, so this allows patients to have a much faster recovery time, but it's also a very difficult procedure. And so it's very important to have good training um, systems. So um, from the computer science end of things, I've been developing material models of deformations that um, simulate how flesh interacts during the surgery procedure. And what we're using is uh, this haptic device here. So this allows the user to interact with um, the simulation in 3D and um, haptic comes from the word touch, which means this gives you the ability to not only see what's uh, the simulation, but feel it using the device which resists you via motors and um, mechanical devices. So, uh, as I move the device around here in 3D, you can see that the virtual tool makes the same motion that I'm making with my hand here. And then I can also interact with the scene, so if I bring it down here, it resists the motion and I can actually feel the surface of the floor. So. Um, this is a very similar to a laparoscopic surgery procedure where um, a camera is inserted into the abdomen and this allows the surgeon to see what's going on and then they're manipulating remotely, or well, not remotely, but via um, tools in the same way that we're doing remotely here. So I can use this tool to kind of pressure against the surface and you get a feeling of a soft flesh in a way that's different from interacting with the walls. And then here we have a model of an electrocautery tool which is used to cut the surface um, as well as producing a very unpleasant odor. <laughs> but also, it prevents bleeding and uh, these sorts of things. So you can kind of burn away at the flesh here and change the shape of the surface, which then is reflected by, you can feel the difference in how it's uh, deforming. So here we're modeling a surgical procedure of extraction of either a tumor or um, often like in appendicitis, you'd have a defective organ. So um, it's an exploratory process. Um, we can begin to reveal some things such as arteries, and here you can actually feel the artery um, as the tool comes into contact with it. But So that's important to be able to notice these types of things because that's not something we want to be cutting. <laughs> <laughs> so we can kind of keep exploring, and here I uncover a tumor, and as I use this grabbing tool, I can actually feel when the tool comes into contact with the object, which is an important um, intuitive cue to make the training more realistic. And then I can use the tool to grab and extract, extract the tumor. Um, so this is in, uh, beneficial for training because also it allows you, since we're using a virtual representation, you can monitor the surgeon as they're performing these tasks in, for improving their performance, as well as um, some of the future uses of these types of technologies is you can also use the tool to guide your hand and prevent errors. Um, so. Uh, that could be very useful in like remote surgery or other applications. Um, and we're using the VisWall to create a more immersive environment, and hopefully in the future we'll be investing in other technologies such as head tracking, so that you can really have a virtual reality experience where as you move around, it changes view as if you're actually looking at a scene, um, as well as just giving this static view. Um, is there any questions? Uh, yeah. Is there like a materials uh, properties database that you populate with either uh, real or made up data to approximate the real tissue? So that would be nice. <laughs> um, there is some research done on material properties of different organs such as the liver that are um, commonly used. But as far as I know there's not a general database. So we've been working with sort of an intuitive feel. We're also collaborating with surgeons in the New England Medical Center as well as I think the Beth Israel Hospital to kind of get at least their perspective on um, uh, ways to come up with better material models. Yeah. Are there any um, thoughts of using it in the gross anatomy classes? Um, that would definitely be possible as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of different like you know, training or educational or um, different applications for this. Um, the company that makes the device also um, produces software used for like modeling. Um, and kind of you can do clay deformations and kind of interact. Pretty any graphical scene you can use with this device to interact physically. Yeah. Have you have you thought about using it for games? Um, <laughs> of 
course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's... Um, How about games that, that generate revenue for the university? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you guys can come up and try it, but if you really want, you can pay to come up and try it. <laughs> <laughs> that would that, be a scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's you know, pretty much anywhere graphics goes, you can use this. And it's great because you can get a 3D interaction as well as the force feedback. So sometimes you forget with the, two, the, the even the 3D rendering on a 2D display, you forget that you know, your mouse can go left and right, but here you can actually get stuck behind things. So it's a different experience. Can you imagine rendering it in 3D? Yeah, so that's definitely one thing we're going to probably do. Um, but you know, as this is very new, so we haven't mm -hmm. just getting things working. <laughs> Is the tumor benign or malignant? Um, <laughs> well, it says malignant because I pulled it out. There, there you go. <laughs> They're just blue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, coming up next, uh, we have Melissa Picker, who is, uh, has more fun things to play with uh, using Legos to interact with Google Earth. Um,